recording is about. And then once I'm done with the recording, I will send you a link to the video. So if you need to go back and reference it, Paul, you can always go back and reference it, okay? Okay. All right. So let me move this screen out of the way. All right. There we go. Okay. So let's recap this problem. So someone borrowed $10,000 at a rate of 5% for five years. So the question is, what is the monthly payment? So I've got my payment formula right here on the screen, guys. Now, remember for the payment formula, when you go in to do it, all your N values, these N values right here in the payment formula, all of them will be wall. So when you go and plug this in, it'll be the payment is equal to the principal. The principal is the loan amount, that's 10,000 times in parentheses, the interest, which is at 5%. So 5% as a decimal would be 0 0.0, okay, my pen is not writing, 0 0.05 over 12. Remember, all the end values are 12 because you're making 12 equal monthly payments for the year. You know what? I forgot to grab a calculator, guys. I'm going to have to find a calculator, Shazam. All That's right, so in the denominator, it's going to be 1 minus... 1 plus 0 0.05 over 12 raised to the negative 12 times 5 power. And all of this, everybody, is on the test. So this is one of the questions on the test. And I'm only going to go over the challenging questions on the test. If I, don't, if I think it's not a challenging question, I'm not going to go over it. That's what you told me last week, and you left me hanging. But okay. Right. No, I explained it to you, Paul. <laughs> you told me you told me to go ahead and Well, it was all that. challenging to me. Okay. <laughs> so, so in parentheses on the bottom, it's a one plus point zero five, right? Yes, That's one it. plus point zero five. Okay. For some reason, my iPad here is a little scratched, so wherever I go on a crack over here, it doesn't want to work, okay? So guys, calculator time. So type it into your calculator exactly like you see it. The 10,000 and then parentheses. Now, Valerie, have you heard from Sequila? No. Okay. Right. Divided by, in parentheses in the denominator, guys, one minus parentheses, one plus 0 0.05 divided by 12. Give it a try. This one right here is a free response question on the test, everybody. And we're rounding it to what? Um, this one, let me double check and see what the rounding is. Hold on a second. Um, we are rounding to the nearest dollar. So it, 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 it's 188.712, that'll be 189. Um, hold on a second, let me finish typing mine in. Uh, negative 60th power. By the way, guys, on the power, make sure when you do your power, you wanna go ahead and do uh, negative 60 for the power. What did you get for the answer? 188.712. Three, Did everybody three, get 188.712? Because my calculator. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. an arrow. Okay. Valerie, uh, you better learn how to use that calculator. Right. Let me just see how you put it out. Okay. <laughs> okay. So if you did not get the correct answer, then you need to go on your calculator, guys. And I'm going to walk you through how to type it on your calculator. But it, again, it's, so it is 188.712, you round it to 189? Yes. Okay. Okay, does anybody need me to go over the steps on how to plug it into the calculator? Yes, because mine came up with an arrow. I'm not sure okay, why. so on your calculator, you want to do the 10,000. But we're trying to have. Open parentheses. 0 0.05 divided by 12, Professor. close parentheses, Professor. and that will be your numerator. Really quickly, 
I found that on my calculator, if I put the top in and then put over and then put the put it underneath, mine comes up error. But if I put the top in and then I just push divided by and then put the bottom in, then yes. it comes up correctly. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what you're supposed to be doing. Okay. All right. Um, I kind of got lost as to where I stopped. Why not? Oh my God. Okay, how are you doing? Now let me see what happened here. Okay. You don't know what you're doing wrong? <laughs> it's still not working for you? No. Okay. I did I did exactly how you did it. Ten thousand parentheses. And then I did the zero point no I um point zero five. Divided by twelve. Yeah, point zero five divided by twelve. Close the parentheses. Okay. Divided by open parentheses for the denominator. It wasn't just a one oh. minus mm -hmm. open parentheses. Okay, let me see if I could point it out. And then oh, you're going to do one plus the Army Corps of Engineers. Point zero five divided by twelve. Close the parentheses. Hit your power key. Now for the power key value, mm -hmm. yeah. I think yours looks like this. I'm using this. Okay, look on the screen. Does it look like that? Are you using mm -hmm. a four function calculator? No, the four function calculator won't work. <laughs> it won't. It worked last time for me. It did. Okay. Did you when, use when the power? Was that? When you were dreaming. This. Oh, you don't use this one. This not the one. Right, I got one? mine. I I got it. Okay. All right. So, did you hit your power key? Yes. And, and type in negative 60. Mm -hmm. And then close the parentheses. And hit enter. Did you get it? You got it? Point zero five. All right. Um, now, guys, I'm going to ask you to do attendance for me. Let me generate a number for you to do attendance on here for me, please. Um, right. I forgot about that. Yes, we forgot about it. Um, I am going in and grabbing a number. They disagreed with the decision. So we will not be using the Blackboard Collaborate. We're going to use Zoom instead. Um, let me see here. We want to do a check-in. Start checking in. And the number is 3493 for attendance. 3493 for the attendance. Do we have to do that now or can we do it after? It was, it was, you said it was 0 .068, right? For what? The answer, no. Um, the answer is one eighty nine. Right. You should well, keep it on the screen. Answer. I did exactly how you did it. Okay. Um. So let me just go ahead and pause on your problem right there. Hold on a second, guys. Let me admit Alexis. And you said the attendance is what? Uh, uh, it's on the uh, top right. right. Can you see it on the screen? Okay, I see. Okay. So put a note next to your problem, Valerie, and then later okay. on we'll go over it together again, okay, as to why you can't get it on your calculator, all right? Because I want to do as many of these problems as I can before time is up, all right? So here comes another question you guys are going to see on the test. Where was the attendance, um, Professor? Say it again. Where was the attendance? I didn't see. Um, it's at the top right here. Okay, right here. You see it? Three, four, nine. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Or write it down so you guys can do it later. You don't have to do it now. Okay. All right. So three, four, nine, three is the code. All right. So I'm gonna start a new whiteboard. Now, uh, the next question. 
at the time of her grandson's birth, her grandmother deposited $5,000. That would be the principal. $5,000. Uh, in an account paying 5%. So the rate is 5%. And it's compounded monthly. If it's compounded monthly, that would be 12 times per year. Monthly means 12 times per year. What is the value of the account when the child turns 21? All right, guys. So on this one right here, we're going to go ahead and uh, use the compound interest formula. We're going to calculate the total value of the account if the interest is being compounded monthly. Now, how do we know which formula to use? Well, once it says compounding, you have to make sure that N value is in there somewhere. And the compound formula for this is going to be A equals to uh, P times one plus R over N raised to the NT power. That's the compound interest formula. Remember, all these questions are in the test guys. So to solve this one, we're going to do 5,000. That's how much money is being deposited. So the P value is 5,000 times one plus the interest rate, 5%. So that's gonna become 0 0.05. You know what, I think I'm gonna erase this. I don't have sufficient room to write all of this. Okay, so I'm gonna try this again. At the bottom, guys, here it is, 5,000, open parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.05 over, um, let's see here, 12. We're going to raise it to the 12 times um, 21 power. Now, one of the things I like to do is to do the multiplication in the power ahead of time. So... Somebody can go ahead and put the 12 times one on the calc, I mean 12 times 21 on the calculator. Okay, let's see here. It's 252. 252? Yes. Okay, so I would, I would use a 250 second power, okay? You don't have to do it that way, but for some calculators, it helps to do it that way. Okay. Uh, trouble with hearing the live stream. It's telling me my computer isn't uh, up to date and to download Google Chrome. I will rejoin as soon as possible. Okay, no problem. All right, guys. And remember, I am going to be sending out the video later on because all of this is being recorded. All right, so those of you who put it on the calculator, what did you guys get? 14,257. Same here. Okay, it again for me, please. You can also type it into the answer, I mean the chat box. 14,000. 252. 257. 257. Uh-huh. 0.12. One, Thank you. And what we're, what are we rounding it next to? Probably to the nearest, the nearest dollar. dollar. Okay, let me double check that for you. And according to this, it says to round to the nearest dollar. So this okay. one would just be $14,257. Now, this one is a free response question, guys. So you're just going to have to type the answer in. It's not multiple choice. Any questions on this one? Are you guys okay with it? Give me a thumbs up if you're okay with it. Oh, I see the thumbs up. Hold <laughs> on. You guys have the reaction button at the bottom of the screen. Yay. Okay, I see an applause. Okay, very good. All right. So, next one. Uh, for this particular problem, guys, very straightforward problem, but you got to know how to do it. So they want you to calculate this question right here. Three is what percent, and this one is pre response to what percent of 50? 
China, we stop Europe, we stop the world of Europe. And then ultimately- Okay, once again, three is what percent of 50? So on this particular problem, we can create a proportion to solve it. Or for some of you, you may be looking at this and saying, what? This is only asking me this. Three out of 50 is what percent? But the quickest thing to do, guys, is to do a proportion. And remember, when you do these proportion for these problems, it's percent over 100 equals the is number over the of number. So if you're going to create a proportion for this, you would do percent, which is P, because we don't know what the percent is, over 100 is equal to 3 over 50. And to solve it, you're going to cross multiply. What is the ish over what? Yeah. Um, is number. That's the is number. Is over number. The of okay. Number. And that's of, right? Mm -hmm. O-F? Yeah. Okay. Okay, of, so since we don't know the percent, H? we call it P, put it over 100. The number which is close to is, is the three. And then the of number is 50. So now you're gonna cross multiply and solve it. Okay. When you cross multiply, I am going to go to the next page. Are you guys okay with this? Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, so when you cross multiply, you're going to get 50p is equal to 300 and you want to go ahead and divide both sides by three i mean by 50 okay and so guys my pen is not wanting to write here Suzanne. okay uh, so they're pretty messy. all right so p is equal to six. what's the answer guys six Six. Six. Okay. And remember, this represents a percent. So this is reflecting 6%. six percent. Now, additionally, some of you could have done this. You could have just done three divided by 50 on your calculators. You would have gotten 0 0.06. And that 0 0.06, all you have to do is convert it to a percent. To convert it to a percent, you could multiply it by 100 or just take the decimal, move it over one two places to the right. So that would have given you 6%. Okay, next. Uh, remember, so far, these three questions are all for response. We have a tax question coming up next. It is multiple choice. So guys, here comes a tax question. I know how you feel about those tax questions. But we're gonna do that. I only gave you guys two, okay? This one right here, you have to do the entire tax. And then the other one, you have to do um, uh, the gross income, the adjusted gross income, and the taxable income. And that's it. I kept it very simple for you guys, okay? Whatever. Now, this particular question right here, guys, is a uh -huh. single person. I don't think it would have acted any faster. Uh, but the Democrats, their whole, their whole life, their whole being. Okay. The you still give us sorry. You still give us the formula on the test. Okay. Online. Remember, Valerie, you're doing all of this at home. Oh yes, I home. Okay. okay. Right. All right. You can't now, post the cheat sheet. That is all on your notes. It's <laughs> it's a single person. The gross is thirty five thousand. Okay. There's an adjustment, and the adjustment for this one is going to be. 3,000. There are some deductions. After the deductions, it is going to be, let's see, $2,000 for the more, uh, for charity. All right. And then we got 2,500 for state taxes. And guys, that's it. Your job is to figure out this person's tax liability. So thirty-five thousand gross, three thousand dollar adjustment, two thousand dollar charitable contribution, twenty-five hundred dollars state tax. All right. So you said that's two thousand, huh? Charity's two thousand, and that's twenty-five, right? Yeah. 
All right. Okay. So now let's go ahead and work on this. Now let's calculate the AGI, the adjusted gross. So the adjusted gross would be the 35,000 minus the 3,000. And the 3,000 is the adjustment. That's the adjustment right there. So the total is going to come out to be 32,000. Okay, that's the AGI. Next, we're going to calculate the taxable income. Now for the taxable income, guys, be careful. Let's chat a little bit. When you're doing the taxable income, you are to take the AGI, that's your AGI, 32,000. You're going to minus this person's deductions, okay? So you're going to take the 32,000, you're going to subtract this person's deductions and exemption. Now, if you look carefully, guys, the deductions are 2,000 uh, plus $2,500 in estate tax. If you add the 2,000 plus the 2,500, it's going to give you 4,500. Now, this person's um, Standard deduction on the tax table. Let me tell you exactly how much it is. I'm going into the tax table. The standard deduction is 6,300. You have to take whichever value, whichever amount is greater. So should you go with the deductions that are provided here, or should you go with the standard? And the standard for this person is 60, what did I say, 6,500 or 6,300? 63. 63. 6,300. So these two right here, they add up to 4,500. So whichever amount is greater, that's the amount you wanna go with. So which one is greater, guys? 63. 63, very good, Doran, I hear you. All oh, right. No, and then, sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> and then this person also has the exemption that we want to take. So guys, going back to the problem, we are going to subtract 6,300. That's the deduction and that's the standard deduction. We're also going to subtract $4,050. And this one right here represents the um, exemption. And for the exemption, everybody gets the same amount, by the way, exemption. So now we grab a calculator. Put that on the calculator. 32,000 minus 6,300 minus $4,050. So what's the value, guys? 21,600. 21,600. There's not a $50 in there? Yes, yeah, okay. 50. Okay, $650. All right. So guys, this is the taxable income. In other words, this is what we're going to use to go to the tax table. So now I'm gonna go to the tax table and on the tax table, it says that this person ends up in the 15% tax bracket. That's the 15% tax bracket. All right. So now I'm ready to calculate the tax liability. This is the only question you're going to have like that on the test and it's multiple choice. You guys ready for me to calculate the tax liability? Yes. Okay. All right, I'm going to erase this. So now here's what we're going to do. By the way, your question is very similar to this. So just make sure you're taking some good notes. So the tax will equal to 0.10 times 9,275. Oh Lord, this pen is not allowing me to write, guys. Let me try this again on another line. 0.10 times 9,275. Okay, so that's the, that's the amount he's going to be paying at the 10% level. And then for the 15%, we're going to take his total taxable income, which is $21,650. And 
and we're going to minus 9,275 from the previous tax bracket. So guys, on your calculators, you're going to do 0.10 times the 9,275 plus 0.15 parentheses 21,650 minus 9,275 and hit enter to figure out this person's tax liability. So what's the tax liability for this individual? 278375. 278375. Excellent, Carl. All right. And this one is a multiple choice item on the test guys. And there's no tax credit. Okay. I think you just answered my question for number six. I was doing the 10%, then the 15, then the 28 or the 25, then the 28, then the 30. Yeah, you're supposed to do that actually. All of them? When it was 395,000? Yeah. I was supposed to do yeah. that? Mm hmm. And that amount is actually the taxable income, which allows you to go directly into the tax table. Where I went wrong, though, is with my taxable income. Oh. That's why. Okay. All of my other answers were wrong. Okay. Remember, we did a lot of preliminary work to get to the taxable income. Yes. Your problem has already given you, they've already done the preliminary work for you. So they're just giving you the taxable income, which takes you into the tax table for you to do the calculations. Yeah, but see, I was using the standard deduction oh, along no. with the charity, along with the yeah. state. and. And yeah. minus and all that. And that's the problem. Instead of using one or the yeah. other. But now yeah. I see where I went wrong. That's right. the problem. Yeah. Okay. Just, re just remember that if there's a tax credit, you have to add that after you did all the uh, taxable income stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, you got to subtract it. Once you calculate the tax, you're going to subtract the tax credit. But this one right there we just did that's on the test, it's not. I mean, there was no tax credit on it, so you don't have to worry about the tax credit. Okay, just for the quizzes. Right. Mm-hmm, yeah. All right, guys, so the next one, so pay careful attention to this one. I'm gonna read it to you. It says to find the loan's future value A, or the total amount due at time T, given P is equal to 19,000, uh, R is equal to 10%, and then it says T is equal to five years. And they want the loan's future value. And so that's one of the formulas, guys. So the future value formula is A equals two P times one plus R times T. So now we're going to take that 19,000, plug it in for... This problem is a um, CD question, right? Um, yeah, it's a free response question. So you're gonna have to type in your answer. Okay. And it also says to round to the nearest set. So guys, uh, we're going to do A is equal to 19,000 times one plus 0.10 times five. Now I kept the test very straightforward. I didn't throw any questions in there that had a curve to it that was going to ask where you guys were going to ask the question, what the heck is this? I've never seen it. No, nope. it's very straightforward, everybody. All right, so now we grab our calculators, guys, and just plug this into the calculator. So give it a try. Let's see what 28, we come up with. 28,500. Say it again. 28,500. 28,500. Now, this one, they want you to round it to the nearest cents. Are there are some decimals after that? No. no that's just, oh, okay, so that's very straightforward. So be careful with the rounding. Now, because we have some for response questions on the test, when you are doing your test, make sure you work out your problems on paper, make sure it's well organized so that if for some reason you get a question wrong, you can always take a picture, 
email it to me and then I'll be more than happy to look over your work to see if I can give you partial credit. All right. Okay. Any questions? Okay, guys. So here comes the next one. By the way, there's a lot of true or false questions on the test. Like this one right here, credit reports include details about all of your open and closed credit accounts. True or false? True. That's true. Unlike a debit card, a credit card will still work if the money needed is not in your checking or savings account. Unlike a debit card, a credit card will work if the money is not in your checking or savings account. Oh, yeah. that's, true. that's true. Because you're using other people's money. Yeah, I'm thinking it was, you know, not no money in your debit or your credit, you're using debit or credit card. Unless you're, like, you're going over your credit limit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hear Good point. you. Uh, say that for me one more time. Uh, that was Charles saying good point. Oh, okay. Very good. <laughs> All right. Um, a sequence of equal payments made at equal time periods is called what? Is it a stock, a bond, an annuity, or interest rates? A what? A sequence of equal payments made at equal time periods is called a stock, bond, annuity or interest rate. Uh, I believe it's annuity. Yep, that's an annuity. Yeah. Stocks, when you purchase them, pretty much you're buying shares of a company or part ownership into a company. A bond, when you buy it, you buy it once at face value. And then the interest rate is basically the rent that you pay on money when you borrow money. So stocks are what? Say it again. Stocks are what? What did you say stocks were? Okay. Stocks, you buying partial ownership into a company, fractional ownership in a company. Literally, he had days where he didn't go to bed, he didn't go to sleep, he, called, he went 24 hours and then started the next day. That noise. Oh, exactly. Okay. Um, yes, there is some noise in the background. So if you're not using your mic, guys, could you kindly turn it off for me, please? All right. Um, here's another question, guys. Let's see here. Let's look for another true or false question. Wait a minute. Um, okay, one quick question. Uh -huh. What are bonds then? Okay, bonds are IOUs. You are lending money to an entity it could be a government like the treasury bonds the municipal bonds a corporation okay so bonds you are buying them at face value and they pay you interest on the bond once it matures you get your money back plus any interest that it has accrued okay so it's an IOU. That's the simplest way of explaining a bond. You loaning your money to other people and they okay. pay you interest for borrowing your money. All right, guys. So here's another true or false question. Leasing is essentially a long-term rent to own agreement. True or false? When you lease a vehicle, oh. are you doing this for the long-term and eventually will become a rent to own agreement. Nope, that one is false. Uh, let me see what else. Okay, next one. Hold on a second. People who buy bonds own a share of a company, which is the same as when they buy stock in the company. False. False. True. That one is actually true. What? Yeah. Oh, got it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All what right. Is, what is it again, please? Um, let me see. People who buy bonds own a share of a company. They own a part of the company because you own it. You're, oh, um, you're loaning the money for the company. So if 
you want your money back, they actually have to take the money from the company to pay you back. Right. So, no, no, people no, it makes buy sense. bonds on a share of a company, which is the same as when they buy stock in the company. All right, guys. Next one. Let me see here. Let me see if there's any more true or false one. Um, uh, that's about it for the true or false ones. Okay, so now let's go back and do this next one. This is another free response question. And it says, find the simple interest. You gotta calculate the simple interest. And there's a formula for that, obviously. Okay, there's my pen not writing again. The simple interest on a loan of 2,500, for two years, and this is going to be at a rate of 5%. Are you guys going to be okay with this one? I think so. The yeah. simple interest is... Um, I, I equals two P times, times R, R times, T. times T. So PRT. The principal times the rate times the top. Yeah. All right. I you guys are going to be okay with this one, right? Yeah. All right. So let me go ahead and move on. Next question. Let's see, where are we? Um, all right. A pair of jeans, this one is multiple choice. A pair of jeans with an original price of $59 pair of jeans, they were $59, okay? They were on sale at 15% off. And so your job is to figure out the sale price. What's the sale price of a pair of jeans? Okay, guys, so let's think about this one. If the jeans are 15% off, what percent are you going to pay for them? Oh, it's 15% off, I thought yes. you said 50. 15%. Right. I was about to so, say that's simple math. That's like twenty nine bucks right there. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to say. But then I then I saw the fifteen. <laughs> easy. Actually, that would be twenty nine fifty. Okay, not just twenty. Close, close in the okay thirty bucks. To make it simpler. <laughs> okay, so guys, here's the question: If you were purchasing this pair of jeans and they're fifteen percent off. What percent would you be paying to buy this pair of jeans? Okay, so that sounds like we're having a little problem here. Okay, so let's calculate the discount. So the discount would be equal to the price of the pair of jeans times the uh, percent discount, 15%. So you grab your calculator, put this on a calculator. 59 times 0.15. Somebody multiply that, please. What do we get for that? 3.93. 3.93, as in $3.93. That's the discount. So the sale really? price will be equal to $59 minus $3.93. So this will leave you with $55. All right, time out. Okay. I'm, yes. not, I'm not getting that same discount when I put it in You're my You're not? Pocket. No. 59 times 0. 0.15, what did you get? Um, I'll do it again. 59 okay. times 0. 0.15. 0. 0.15. 0. 0.15. Right. I'm getting 8.85. You too. Uh, actually, yeah. let me see. 10% is about 5.9. Yeah, you're right. That sounds much better. You had me do it five times because I thought I was lost. Carl, you're completely right. Okay. All right, everybody. So let me go ahead and rectify this one right here. Okay, so you said $8 and how many cents? 85. 85 cents. So we're going to subtract the 885 from the 59. So this is going to turn out to be... How much money? Fifty dollars and one fifteen. Mm-hmm. Fifty fifteen. So yep. Okay. Now earlier I had asked you this question. 
what percent of the original price are you going to pay if it's 15 percent off that means that you're going to pay 85 percent so another way you could have done this problem is to go ahead and take 59 and multiply it by 0.85 and would give you the exact same thing guys fifty dollars and fifteen cents okay so this would work too if you just multiply it by the percent you're going to pay for yeah the first one this okay <laughs> all righty so now uh, problem number let me see the next problem we have a sofa which regularly sells for seven hundred dollars and this particular sofa right here guys is on sale for 629 okay this thing is not writing the zero okay can i get a zero in here okay that's supposed to be 700 guys okay so now it's on sale for um 609 so the question is this oh my goodness i'm having such issues with this thing tonight hold on let me erase all of this okay so the sale price is 609 so your job is to figure out the percent decrease what's the percent to decrease All right, so to calculate the percent decrease, we're going to take the original price, 700, minus the new price, divided by the original price, and then multiply it by 100. Because we want a percent, so we have to multiply it by 100 to convert to percent. All right, guys, so on your calculator, you do 700 minus 609, which gives you 91. 91 divided by 700 and then times that by 100. So what do you guys get? 13. Exactly 13? Yeah. Oh, okay. Check your work, guys, and see if you get the answer. How are you guys doing? Um, I'm not doing too well, apparently. Okay, so once again, you want to do 700 minus 609. Hit enter. I got 613. Okay. 700 minus 609 should give you 91. Equals divided by 700. Yes. Point zero three. And then times it by 100. 100. 13, yeah. Okay. All right. Perfect. How did you put that in the calculator? Okay. I think it's easiest to go ahead and do the fraction first, get the answer, and then times it by 100. So personally, I would do 700 minus 609. Hit enter. So you get your 91. 91 divided by 700. And then hit enter and then times it by 100. Okay. And, and so for him to now say that he is the one who stood up against the people who really were himself, I think is, is quite resolved. So, uh, Sante, you know, when he points to China and how bad it was in China, of course, one thing we all know from China no. is that... Okay. All right, guys, just a couple more and then I'll be done with this review. All right, this one requires you to calculate the value of the annuity and how much interest is earned from the annuity, okay? You gotta find the value of the annuity and then how much interest is earned. Now, again, I make this test very straightforward, guys. So when you're working on this problem, don't make it complicated, okay? So here's the premise of this question. We got to find the value of an annuity. Oh, Lord. There goes this thing breaking off again. Annuity. And it says periodic deposit is going to be 1,000 
Uh, it's breaking out again. 1,000 um, at the end of each year, every year. And then the interest rate is 6.5%. And this one is being compounded annually. Compounded annually. Okay, 100, right. Deposit 100, what's that? No, 1,000. It's 1,000, but it's kind of like cut off because of my iPad here. It's 1,000. Okay. Now, because this is being compounded annually, N is going to equal to 1. So, the formula you would use, guys, by the way, the time is 9 years. And so, Aaron, let's hope. We're speaking on a Tuesday evening. Let's hope if we meet on Friday. So, the formula we would use is A equals 2. My house is trying to insert. P times 1 plus R to the T power. Okay. This thing is not working like I want it to. Minus 1. Close the bracket. And all of this is being divided by R. Now, I want you to notice, guys, there's no N in there. Why don't we have an N in there? And so let's hope that by the end of Because it's one, so it's just going to um, eliminate itself anyway. Very good. Very good, Carl. So now, guys, we're going to plug in the values. 1,000 parentheses, 1 plus, point zero. Six five. We're going to raise that to the ninth. We have two parentheses up here, though. Huh? Shouldn't it be two parentheses after one thousand, or a bracket after one thousand, or not? Um. You know what? I did not put the bracket over here. You're right. Hold on a second. Let me put the bracket right there. And then minus one, and then close off the bracket. And all of this gets divided by 0 0.065. All right, you guys give it a try. My dog is running into the door with his ball with her ball. She's trying to let me know enough is enough. <laughs> oh, is she trying to get your attention? Yes. <laughs> and she's going to break my French door doing it. So I'm going to have to go out there and punch her in her eye. Real quick. Oh, that, oh, my God. <laughs> Mine is really bad lying right down now. on the floor here. <laughs> she's being really bad right now. Mine is working. He's upset. I wish I Look at him. He's talking to me. He's like, what you talking about? <laughs> I'm just surprised my dog hasn't scratched on the door yet. Asking <laughs> me to take her out. Um, <laughs> yep. I got 27101.08. I didn't get that. Uh, okay. I Let me double check that. 11,731.85. Okay, That's I'm gonna go with check. Anybody else have a different answer? No, I got that eleven thousand seven thirty-one. Okay, let me do it again. I got twenty-seven thousand one hundred sixteen point forty-six. Okay. One plus point zero six five. Close the parenthesis. Oh wait, no, I messed mine up. Raise uh, to the ninth to power. My money in your bank. Yeah, because I ended up getting eleven seventy three one. So I, yeah, I got the it's eleven thousand uh seven hundred thirty one dollars. Yeah. Oh, I don't have, uh, but Every you gotta round, round it. Two. So it's gonna be eleven thousand uh seven hundred thirty two dollars. Now, guys, for this particular question right here, it is multiple choice. There's a secondary part to this that will ask you to calculate how much interest was earned. We can go ahead and do that part as well. 
But realistically, when you're doing this multiple choice problem, once you figure out the total value of the account, you pretty much have your answer. You don't even have to calculate the interest. But based on this, guys, we started with $1,000 every year for nine years. So at the end of nine years, how much money would this individual have contributed to the account? 9000 9000 So the amount of interest earned over the nine years would be the um, 11000 minus the 9000 so the interest would be two thousand seven hundred thirty. Okay. So pretty much, you take the eleven thousand seven hundred thirty-two minus one thousand times nine because this person is doing it at the end of every single The sound off, please. Huh? The sound. Okay. Can, can you guys turn off your audio, please, if you're not asking a question? Can you mute your audio? Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Okay. I think, is that all the review? I think so. Guys, I think we're done with this review. Yeah, it's uh, 10 questions, well, 12, considering it's true and false, but yeah, it's a good Good chunk of what we learned. Yeah. Okay, so that's the. I'm, I'm, I'm not getting right after. That's why I'm telling the um, quizzes. I'm really not getting that right answer. I don't know. I'm using the calculator. I'm putting it in exactly how you have it. The closed brackets, I'm using um, parentheses for them. Right. And I'm getting the wrong answers, especially the first two questions in the last one here. Okay. The first two questions when we started in the last one here, I'm not getting the right answers. Okay. So Valerie, do me a favor. Once I'm done with everybody else, you stay and you two call, you stay, and then we'll talk about some of these issues you're having, okay? Okay. All right, guys. So what I would like to do now is start working on assignment number, um, chapter four, actually. Start looking at the work from chapter four because I wanna make sure we have enough time to do the work for chapter four, as well as do the work for chapter 13. We're probably not going to take a test on chapter um, 13, but you need to know the material in chapter 13 in order to uh, get ready for the final exam, all right? Now, here's a question for you guys. Um, for the test, the test is due on Friday. Okay, by midnight. Now, if you haven't already done the assignments, do you feel like you're going to be okay based on the review to do the test by Friday? Yep. Yeah. I think so. If you haven't already done the assignment and you're not feeling okay, then you need to go ahead and make sure you go in and work on the assignments. At least work on the homework so you can feel more comfortable with the work and then go ahead and take the all right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I am going to move on to chapter four now, guys. I'm going to try my best to get through at least the first two lessons. Um, today is obviously the 31st of March. Tomorrow we start the new month, which is going to be April 1st. So essentially, we have about two more Tuesdays. Yeah, right about two more Tuesdays before the final exam. And I need to cover chapter four as well as chapter um, 13 with you guys. So I am going to get started with chapter four, lesson four one. Now, the worst part about all of this is that I don't have a textbook to show you guys right now and I can't show you all of this in a textbook. But what I like to do is- I have one for sale. You have one for sale, quick. <laughs> Sorry, by the time it's mailed there, it may be too late. <laughs> I'm Amazon, I deliver. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. So what I like to do in this chapter, and this is gonna be really hard to do because it's hard to 
put a textbook on display right now. But typically, I go through the chapter and show you guys different number systems, numbering systems. By the way, if you have a textbook, you can go ahead and look through the chapter so you can see the different numbers. And if you don't have a textbook, a hard copy of the textbook, you can always go online and look up the e-text, all right? Uh, you know what? Let me see if I could share my screen with you guys. Let's try that. You should be Hold able to. Hold on a second. Let me see. But, yep, if everyone, if anyone's not good with Roman numerals, you're not gonna like this chapter at all. <laughs> oh, no, 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 that's one of the easiest ones. I know. <laughs> okay. My little brother doesn't like Roman numerals, so he hates the clock that we have above our kitchen. Oh, I gotcha, I gotcha. I'm with your little brother. <laughs> okay. You're not, you're not gonna like this chapter then. I'm just letting you have the biggest warning. I haven't liked any chapter. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, that's horrible. Um, sharing is pause. Okay, I'm just going to go back to sharing. Okay, I don't want to make this complicated and I end up getting lost in the process. What are you guys seeing now? Uh, blank screen. A blank screen. Okay, that's what I was afraid of. Let me make sure this goes back to its original state. Okay, so this is taking its time. All right, so as I'm waiting for this to come back on, let me just go ahead and say this, guys. Okay, so lesson, I mean, chapter four is on the history of numbers and numbers and other bases. When I go through the history of numbers, I go into different types of numbering system. For example, the Babylonian number system, which uses a series of arrows, depending on which direction the arrow is pointing, that determines the value of the number, whether it's a one, a 10, and so forth and so on. Normally when I'm teaching this, I put the book on display to show this, but obviously I can't put the book on display right now. Now, there's also the Mayan number system. The Mayan number system involves a whole bunch of dots and segments. The dots are pretty much straightforward. One dot is one, two dots represents two, three dots represents four, four dots, four, and then when they get to five, rather than using five dots, they use a segment to represent five. So if they needed to make the number six, they would use a segment with a dot on top of it. And I can't show you that because my iPad is acting up. And then of course, if they wanted to write the number 10, they would use two segments. By the way, I'm just going through a brief um, section about the different types of numbers. But guys, we're not going to study that at all, okay? This is all about appreciating different numbering systems. And again, you can look at these numbers if you were to go ahead and go through the textbook. Now, there's also the um, Roman numerals like he just mentioned earlier, okay? And then you have the Greek Ionic numbering system, that's also in the textbook. You have the Chinese numeration system, which involves writing the numbers vertically. And there's also the Braille numbering system. Now, the Braille number system is very interesting because in order to take a book, guys, and convert it to Braille, it takes a lot of work. And when a book is converted to Braille to allow the blind to be able to read, it takes up volumes, okay? So one textbook might actually be a five volume to represent that one textbook. And all of that is in chapter four. Now, when we start with chapter four, we start with lesson 4.1. Basically in lesson 4.1, they give you a brief 
history of the numbering system. What does a number represent? The number itself represents an abstract idea. It's a numeral. They take a numeral to attach these numbers. And what that means is it's answering the question, how much or how many? For example, in history, it was how many animals, how many buffaloes did I kill in the field? So to represent the number of animals a hunter may have killed out on the field, what did they use? They use numbers to represent that. And the numbering system back then was maybe tally marks, okay? Now, I know I'm talking a whole lot. I'm supposed to be writing, but this thing is not coming back on. So let me try and see if I can change anything right here. No, it's not allowing me to change anything, guys. So let me see. I'm going to stop sharing again. All right. Let's see here. I'm going to try this one more time. Now we have a full view of you. I know. Oh, that's what I say. There we have a full okay. view of you, Carl. Okay, there we go. Okie dokie. All right, so there we go. Okay, guys. So back then in Roman times, I'm not Roman times, way, way back in uh, prehistoric, prehistoric times, okay? If a hunter went out and killed some animals and he wanted to keep track of how many his animals he killed, he probably used the tally marks like this. And when he got, and you know, just to keep track of the number of killings he made, okay? And actually, if we go through the textbook, they have artifacts in the textbook, pictures of artifacts, where they actually put these tally marks, guys, directly on their weapons that they use to make their kills. So basically, a number is an abstract idea representing the question, how many or how much? Now, next. When we talk about the numeration system today that we use, it is referred to as the Hindu Arabic number system. Hindu Arabic numbers. This is the numbering system that we use today, guys, which includes the digits 0, 1, 2, 3, and so forth and so on, all the way up to 9. That's the Hindu Arabic numbering system, what we are used to. So our numbering system, we refer to it as the Hindu Arabic numbering system because as numbers evolved throughout history, you know, we had the Egyptian number system, which we're going to talk about, the Roman numeral system, which we're going to also talk about, and eventually it evolved into the Hindu Arabic numbering system, which is what we use. Now, the Hindu Arabic number system uses base 10. We can take any number and rewrite it in base 10. For example, guys, if we were writing the number 732, 732 is made up of 700 plus 30 plus 2. Now, if we're using base 10 to write this, the 700 is made up of 7 times 100. And then the 30 is made up of 3 times 10. And then, of course, you have your 2. Now, the 100, you can rewrite it as 10 to the second power. So there's your base 10 right there. The 30, you can rewrite it as 3 times 10 to the first power. There's your base 10. You really don't have to write the power 1 there. And then finally, the 2, when we rewrite this, this could be 10 to the 0 power. But when you have a base raised to the 0 power, guys, what does it simplify to? 0. What is it? Zero? No, anything raised to zero power is equal to? Anybody else? One. One. Okay, very good. So guys, if we were to take the number 732 and rewrite it in expanded form using base 10, this is what that number 732 would end up looking like using base 10. So pretty much any number that we're used to can be expressed in base 10. 
And so when we express a number I'm, I'm like trying 732 to and base yeah. 10, we call this the expanded form. That's the expanded form of the number 732. All right, what's your question? The one at the end is a one, right? I just can't. Yes, that's a one. All right. Okay. So one of the questions they will ask you to do in this segment is take the 732 right there, take that, and rewrite it in expanded form using base 10. This one, guys, is very straightforward, very easy material. All right. So let me show you another one. Ah, uh, let's we say go. we had to rewrite the number 72,000, 72,243, okay? We have to write it in expanded form. So to write this one in expanded form, okay, think about what this number is saying. This number is saying you have 70,000, plus 2,000, plus 200, plus 40, and then plus three. So when we write the 70,000 in base 10, it would be seven times 10 raised to the one, two, three, fourth power, plus two times 10 raised to the third power for the 2,000. For the 200, it will be two times 10 raised to the second power. And then for the 40, you would have four times 10. And you don't need to put the power one on the 10 here. And then finally, for the three, you would have three times one. So now what I want you guys to notice is this. For the powers, Notice how they're going in descending order of powers. Um, you've got the fourth power, then the third power, then the second power. The first power, of course, is right there. You don't have to write that. And this one right here represents the zero power right there. That represents the zero power, guys. So question about this. Writing there, numbers in expanded form. Uh, what would happen if it was a negative? value okay if it was a negative uh value the entire problem i mean the entire number right here would be a negative now if you're talking about a negative exponent a negative exponent would indicate a decimal so uh, if the exponent is negative you're probably going to cover decimal or a fraction a okay. fraction and a decimal they're basically the same thing all right guys so are you okay with this one right here Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. You can give me a thumbs up if you're okay. Now, all right. So here's the next part. We got to do this in reverse. Let's say they give you a number like this. 8 times 10 to the third plus 5 times 10 plus 4 times 1. And they want you to write this in condensed form. They want you to condense this. Write it in condensed form. So you had expanded form. So now they want you to condense this number into a Hindu Arabic number. So guys, this is the easy part because all you do is take this number, plug it into your calculator and let the calculator do it for you. So on your calculator, you do eight times 10 to the third plus five times 10 plus four times one. You don't even have to worry about writing it out on paper, just plug it into your calculator and let the calculator do it for you. So when you calculate this, guys, it comes out to 8,000 and what, guys? 8,000, what's the answer? Anybody? 8,054. And there you are. Just plug it into your calculator. Just take all of this and plug it into your calculator and let the calculator do it for you, okay? You don't even have to calculate it. But if you wanted to calculate it, 10,000 represents one, I mean, 10 to the third represents 1,000, 
1 times 10 times 8 gives you 8,000. And then you have um, 5 times 10, which is 50, and then plus 4. So you add it all up, and that's how you get your 8,054. And that's it. Okay? This part right here is super easy. It doesn't require much. How are you guys doing? Yes? Right. No? Okay. All right. So that's the extent of lesson 4.1, guys. All we're doing is writing numbers in expanded form. And given the expanded form, write the condensed form or write the Hindi Arabic number for it. And that's it. All right. So now let's get to the good stuff. Okay, you guys ready for the good stuff? All right, so I'm moving on now to lesson 4.2. And we're looking at numbers and other bases. Now, I'm only going to be on here with you guys until 8.30. Those of you who have additional questions for me, you're welcome to stay after and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions, okay? Numbers and other bases, guys. So, I want you to think about this right here. The number 21. If we take 21, we type it into a computer. When the computer reads this number, the computer doesn't see 21. When the computer reads this number, the computer reads it as a series of zeros and ones. So in other words, this number 21 is converted to a binary digit for the computer to understand it. Now, when we talk about a binary digit, the root word bi meaning two. So it consists of a number that includes only two digits and those two digits are zeros and ones zero and one. Those are the only two digits that will make up the number 21. Now, when we talk about computer language, guys, uh, we have binary digits. We also have octodecimal, which is, involves base eight. And then we also have the hexadecimals, hexadecimals. Okay, and does anybody want to guess what base the hexadecimals is in? Anybody? Uh, Octo nine. is base eight. Hexa is what base? Eight. Uh -huh. Five. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> this one is base Six. 16. Okay. Wow. Hexadecimal involves base 16. So binary digits involves base two. So when we talk about a base two number, we only use the digits zero and one. So now I'm gonna go through the process, guys, of how to convert the number 21 into a binary digit. How do we convert that into a binary digit? So here comes the process, guys, okay? Now, let me warn you guys, I always like to warn my students about this. It takes about three examples for you to get this. So don't ask any questions yet until after the third example, okay? So here's the question. This is how it's going to be phrased. Convert 21 to base 2. We're going to convert 21 to base 2. All right, everybody. So here it comes. I'm going to take it very slowly. Don't but ask what's me. On the, what's on the, the, on the top is convert and then put 20 21 on. plus zero. Is 21 two. to two. base two. We're going to convert the number 21 to, to base binary. two. Oh, two. Okay. So, guys, here we go. Um, so, first thing we're going to do, we're going to write the place values. Number one, write the place values for base two. Place values 
for base two. Now we start off with two to the zero power, which is equal to one. Two to the first power, oh my goodness, if this thing would write, two to the first power, which is equal to two. Two to the second power, which is four. Then two to the third power, which is eight. By the way, the question some of you may be asking is, uh, how far do I keep going with this, okay? You're gonna keep listing these place values until you get to a number that is really close to 21, really close to the 21 without going over it. So you're looking for a number that is close to 21 without going over it. So guys, two to the third is eight. And the next one is going to be two to the fourth power, which is 16. 16. We're gonna stop gonna right the there. Hmm? That's gonna be the closest. Yes, absolutely. We're stopping right there because 16 is very close to 21. So now here's the next step. We've got the number 16, eight, four, two, and one to create the number 21. So we're gonna use these digits right here to create the number 21. So how do we create the number 21? Well, we're going to start with the largest digit. In order to create the number 21, we're going to need 116. So if you have 21 and you subtract 16 from it, that leaves you with five. Are you guys okay with that? Mm -hmm. All right, so next. We gotta create the number five with the remaining digits. Well, we've got an eight next. Eight is greater than five, so we can't use the eight. So we're gonna put a zero here to hold its place value because we're not using it. The next digit down is four. We need one four to make the number five. So once we use that four, we subtracted from five, that leaves us with one. So we got one more digit we need to create. The next digit down is two, and two so is greater than one. So that's gonna be a zero. And so the last digit is one, and we need a one in this problem. The last digit is one, and we need it to be a one, so we're gonna put one right there, guys. So pretty much what just happened, the number 21 and base two will be, one, zero, one, zero, one, and base two. So, a couple of things. Amazing. Note, huh? That's amazing. I know. So when you type in the number 21 into the computer, this is what the computer reads, guys. That's what it sees. One, zero, one, zero. And what base are we in? We are in base two. So how does this translate to the computer? The one and the zero represents these switches, on, off switches. So if the one represents an on switch, it's basically doing this. It's on, off, on, off, on, and that's it. Oh. Now, a couple of things. You notice I put the subscript here as the base right there, okay, to indicate which base we're in, that's a subscript, all right? Now you notice we had five place values, that's one, two, three, four. well actually let me point it out, that's one, two, three, four, five place values, and we filled in a number for each place value, we didn't leave any of them blank, so we use all the place values, one, zero, one, zero, one, okay? Next, you will notice our answer, our number in base two, only includes two digits. What are those two digits? Ones and zeros, ones and zeros, and that's it. All right, that was only the first example. Don't ask any questions. It takes about three examples for people to get used to this. If this is the first time you're seeing numbers in base 10, which is this one right here, that's in base 10, being converted to a different base, in this case, base two. All right, guys. Now, questions about this. Okay, 
So I am going to move on to another one. I'm not going to do it in base 10. I am going to go ahead and do this one in, I'm not gonna do it in base two, I'm gonna do it in a different base, okay? So guys, here we go, here comes the next one. This time we're gonna do 43, two, base, oh my goodness, this thing is getting on my nerves, base three. All right, guys, you ready? Okay, notice we're going to base three. So similar process, step one. We're going to list the place values in base three. Three to the zero is one. Three to the second, I mean three to the first, that's three. Three to the second, that's nine. Now, how far do we go out? We keep doing this until we get to a number that is very close to the number we're trying to convert without going over it. So guys, look, here's 43. So far we've gotten to 27. Should we go on to the next place value, three to the fourth power? Yes. Okay, what's three to the fourth power? 81. 81. So it wouldn't be a good idea to go through three to the fourth power, why? Because 81 is greater than 43, okay? Now, the next step is to divide the digits, these digits right here, the 27, the 9, the 3, and the 1, to figure out this number, okay? So I'm going to do this the long way, guys. You don't have to do it the long way. You can do it the short way. So here's another way you can approach this. You guys ready? We're going to go ahead and take the 27, and we're going to divide it into 43. Now, 27 goes into 43 once. We subtract the 27 from 43, and what do we have left over? Anybody? I think it's 16. Are you guys with me? Yes, it's 16. All right, next, we're gonna go ahead and take the next digit down. So we're gonna need 127. So we're gonna take the next digit down, which is the nine. We're gonna divide it into the remainder, which is this time 16. Nine goes into 16 once. You're gonna subtract the nine from 16 and that leaves you with seven. So we're gonna need one nine to create the number 43. So pretty much this is telling us we need a 27. We need one 27, one nine. And we got two more digits left to fill in to create the number seven right there. So guys, we're gonna go down to the next digit. The next digit is three. Three goes into seven, how many times? Two, two times, two times three is six. We subtract, we get one. So this is telling us we need two threes and a one. So the other way you can look at this is the quotients right here. One, one, two, and one would represent the answer. So when you convert the 43 base 10 to base three, it's gonna be one, one, two, one, and base three. So here you go. That's just one way, right? Is your mind blown? That's just another uh, way? Absolutely. <laughs> That's when uh, you think that maths can't get any more complicated. <laughs> just remember, this is how you're watching this right now. Just remember that fact. Because <laughs> remember, all skins and colors, those are all just number values to the computer. Yes, absolutely. So guys, yeah. pretty much, uh, this right here, is something we don't talk about in the mathematics spectrum, numbers and other bases. We don't speak about it very frequently, why? Because obviously, sometimes it can be a little bit too daunting for people, but do we use it? We actually use it. Yeah. I'll tell you an example where we use it. When we are converting time, for example, if you use military time, to the lay person who doesn't understand military time, they have to do a little conversion to the 24-hour clock. Same thing with converting 
minutes to hours or seconds to minutes. That's all converting to different bases. Yeah. So we actually use it. It's just that we don't talk about it like that. Yeah, or when you have to think about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So let me show you, by the way, Valerie, this is the same thing that we did earlier, except I did it in a long way for you, in an extended way for you, okay? It's the same thing. All right, I'm gonna show you one more way of doing this, and then you guys tell me what you think, and that's gonna be our third example. Let's see yeah. how you feel Easy. about it. And yeah. then you guys can start asking me questions. All right, so guys, here's the next one. You ready? So for this one right here, we're going to convert 37 to base 4. Okay, we're going to convert 37 to base 4. All right, you guys ready? Okay, this is a brand new method, but it works. Okay, so here we go. 4, we're going to divide it into 37. Now, four goes into 37, how many times, guys? Nine times with a remainder of what? One. One. All right, so now we're gonna go down to the nine. We're gonna divide four into nine. Four goes into nine, how many times? Two times. Two times with a remainder of one. Are you guys good with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, here's the answer. You ready? Two, one, one is the answer. Two, one, one, base four is the answer. Now, how in the world did we get that? Okay, so let me write it out for you like we were doing earlier. Okay, so I'm gonna write out the place values. Four to the zero is one. Four to the first power is four. 4 to the second power is 16. So to create the number 37, we need two 16s. Two times 16 is what, guys? 32. 32. So if we take 37, we minus 32. That leaves us with a total of 5. Now, if we want to create the number 5 right here, we're using a 4. And a one, what do we need to create the number five using four and one? We just need a one, I mean one four and a one to create the number. So there you go. What do you guys think? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, can, okay. I, can, I can understand it, but I'd rather, but I'm gonna use um, the, the other one. The previous one? Yeah. Okay, so one more. Um, let me see. Now, earlier I did the division. Let's see how the division would work, okay? So Valerie looked a little confused here. So let's go ahead and give the division a try. So the place values for this one are four to the zero, which is one, four to the first, which is four, uh, four to the second, which is 16. So we start with the 16, Valerie. We do 16 goes into 37, two times. Two times 16 is 32. We subtract, we get five. And then we're going to go down to the next digit, four, and we're going to divide four into five. Four goes into five, how many times? Once. One times four is four. We subtract, we get one. So here's the answer. Two, one, one, in base four. Two, one, one, base four. And all this is telling you is this. To create the number um, 37, we're going to need, hold on a second. We're going to need two 16s. Two 16 is 32. We need a, a four. 32 plus four is 36. We need a one. 36 plus one gives you 37. Does that make sense? By the way, guys, this is the same thing as asking for change. If you have a $50 bill, 
you give it to someone and you say, I need change, what are they gonna do? They're going to give you two 20s, okay, which would represent the 16, and a 10, which would represent the four. See, we use these numbers. It's just that you guys don't talk about them in that term. All right, so that was the third example. So start asking me some questions, guys. Ask me some questions. So, Professor, do you, do you write it this way as 211 to base 4, just like that? Excellent way to put it. That's exactly how you say it. 211 base 4. Yes. Okay. And the 4 is a subscript. It just seems, it's supposed to be lower than the number. It just seems like it's next to the number because of the tablet that I'm using. Okay. If I was using a regular pen, it would look much better than that. Of course, when you go on the computer, you will see them too. Right. All right. And just, and just for reference, uh, the sub base is basically the bottom corner of yes. the number instead of uh -huh. you, it's bottom it's, right it's, corner. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It's the opposite of an exponent. Yes, exactly. All right. So when I write that two one one base four, the four has to be lower. Okay, it's a subscript. Hmm, interesting. Yes. All right. So let's do some mental conversions and you will enjoy the mental conversions, okay? Uh, the mental conversions, in other words, you got to do them very quickly. And they're going to be typically uh, very small numbers. Mental conversion, okay? Very small numbers. So let's go ahead and try some. For example, if I have the number eight, I am going to convert it to base five. So all I'm gonna do guys is this, listen to the process. Five goes into eight, five goes into eight, how many times? One. One, one with what left over? Three. Three, so this would be one, three, base five. And that's it, okay? That's a quick mental conversion. Let's do another one. This time let's do nine, two, base six. So we, so we write it, so we write it just one, three, and just five. Base five, yeah. Okay, so nine to base six. So you would do six goes into nine how many times? One. One with what left over? Three. Three. And there you go. And that's it. I like this one. <laughs> okay. It's because we're dealing with smaller numbers. Yeah. Okay. Here comes the next one. So this time I'm going to do 15 to base, um, hold on a second, to base 8. 15 to base 8. So 8 goes into 15 how many times? 1. 1. 1 with what left over? 7. 7 and this is going to be in base eight. All right, one more like this. This time we're gonna do 21 to base nine. Okay, nine goes into 21, how many times? Two. Two, and what's left over? Three. 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 And there you go, that's it. What do you guys think? That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, everybody. So now here's the behind Vladimir. <laughs> okay, here's the beautiful part about this. We're gonna do it in reverse. Oh wow. Okay, how do we go from the numbers and other bases back to base 10? Now, what we were just doing involved multiplication, okay? So if we're going to do it in the reverse, we're going to have to do the inverse or the opposite. So what's the opposite of division? Multiplication. multiplication. Yeah. I know, I see you, Valerie. So you prefer the multiplication. Everybody prefers multiplication over division, all right? So I wanna let you guys out by 8.30. So I'm gonna jump into the reverse of this. And so now we're going to convert other bases. I'm writing other here, guys. It's not coming up. Other bases to 
base 10. So we're converting from other bases back to base 10. All right, so this one involves multiplication. We're going to multiply and add. Earlier, we were doing uh, conversion from base 10 to the other bases. We divided and subtracted. But now we're going into base 10 from the other bases. We're going to multiply and add. So guys, here it is. Let's say we have two, three, one, base four, okay? And we're going to convert this, if my pen would write, to base 10. So if we're going to convert this to base 10, guys, this is so easy, you can even do it on your calculator, okay? So we're gonna count out the place values, starting from the number at the end, okay? So this number right here, represents four to the zero. The three represents four to the first power. And the two represents four to the second power. So in order to come up with the answer, we're going to take the two multiplied by four to the second. And then we're going to add the three multiplied by four. And then we're going to add the one times four to the zero. What's four to the zero power equivalent to, guys? What's the answer for four to the zero power? Four. It equals one. One. So we really don't need this here. So guys, once you have this written out, all you do is plug it into your calculator. So on your calculator, you do two times four, two times four to the second, plus three times four, plus one, and let the calculator do it for you so you can figure out your number. So we multiply each digit by its place value, each digit by its place value, each digit by its place value, and add, and that's it. So multiply each digit by its place value and add. Okay, let me write this down for you guys. Forty-five. Forty-five. Mm -hmm. By each digit. By its place value, <laughs> and add. All right, everyone. So, four squared right here is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. Okay, so this part right here represents 32. And then over here, 3 times 4 is and then you go ahead and add all of it together. 32 plus 12 plus 1 is going to definitely give you 45. See, that's not too bad. This is easier than the previous one. Yes. All right, let's do another one. I think we'll have time to do two more. Okay, so I'm going to do two more and let you guys go. All right, so here comes another one. This time we're going to do four, three, two, uh, base five. And we're going to change this to base 10. All right. So guys, let's count out the place values. So we've got two, which represents five to the zero. The three represents five to the first. The four represents five to the second. So when we write it out, we would do the digit, which is four, multiplied by its place value, which is five, because when base five to the second power, plus the next digit done, which is three, times five, times its place value, which is five to the first power. By the way, you don't need to put that first power there. And then the last digit, you can just add it on there. You don't have to put five to the zero power. And then you just throw this on your calculator. Let your calculator do it for you. Put it on the calculator, guys. So on your calculator, you do four times five to the second, four times five to the second, plus three times five, plus two. And just put it on the calculator. Uh, 116. 
116 or 17? 17. I think it's 117. It's 117. All right, here we go. All right, guys, how you doing? Good. Oh, that's where I missed a thorn. Okay. I didn't want to do it for a living, but it was fun. <laughs> so let's do a binary digit one. So here's the binary digit. It's one one zero one uh, base two. Okay, we're gonna convert that one. Now the first uh, base two problem we did where we're converting twenty one to base two. It turned out to be one zero one zero one. I was gonna say to you guys, this is a palindrome, but I forgot to mention that. I like mentioning the palindromes when I see them. Okay, you get a lot of palindromes in these problems. That's basically a number or a word that is the same thing forward and backwards. All right guys, so let's convert this one. So this one has one, here, let me point them out. One, two, three, four, five digits. So we're gonna count out the place values. So this is two to the zero, two to the first, two to the second, two to the third, two to the fourth. So let's go ahead and write it out. So when we write it out, it's gonna be the one times two to the fourth. That's the first one, guys. Plus one times two to the third. That's the second one, plus one times two to the second. That's the third one. That's the third digit from left to right. And then plus zero times two. But when you multiply by zero, what do you always end up with? Zero. Zero, so this cancels out. And then the last digit is one. So essentially on your calculator, all you're doing, because when you multiply by one, you get the exact same thing right back. You're going to, uh, on your calculator, do two to the fourth plus two to the third plus two to the second plus one, and that will give you a number. So put it on your calculator. Two to the fourth is 16. Two to the third is eight. Two to the second is four. And then we add the one. So the answer turns out to be what? 29. 29. There you go. So pretty much one, 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 zero, one, and base 10 is going to be 29. All right, guys. So that's the introduction to numbers and other bases in chapter four. So I'm going to stop here. It's approximately 8.31. So just a reminder, the chapter eight test is uploaded into my math lab. So you should see it at the top. It is open. You have access to it. Whenever you're ready to go ahead and take the test, you just go in there and work on the test. It's 20 questions. Make sure you check your answers before you submit the test. Once you submit the test, you should be able to see your grade. You can only do the test once. You cannot go back and work on it again. Once you're done with it, you get your grade. And pretty much that's the grade. If you're not satisfied with the grade, take a picture of your organized work, send it to me via email, and I will check on your work to see if I can give you partial credit on the free response questions. And that's it. What? Well, one question before you go, Professor Sarah. Uh -huh. um, that number you gave us to clock in, where do I put it? Oh, you go on Blackboard. Okay, just in our attendance? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. click on your attendance and check yourself in. Okay, okay. What was the number again, by the way? Uh, it was 3493. 3493, just in case somebody missed it, 3493 is the attendance check-in okay. number. And also, you said that you know the first two problems that we went over for the review and the last one, <laughs> I don't know why I'm having issues. With okay. You. All right. So let me say goodbye to everybody else. If you guys are good, we're just going to end class here and I'll chat with you next Tuesday. Have a good one. Hopefully this went well. Thank you for being patient. Thank, Thank you. you. This was it was good. All right. Good night. Nice drive home.